I, th I think I am the idea in a sense. Uh, I've been surfing all my life. My, both my parents are musicians and um, I've grown up listening to Brazilian music mostly, but then, then I studied classical and, and everything, but I discovered uh, my place in music when I went to the little streets of Lisbon and found out about all of the different cultures that are gathering in here to, to produce amazing music that's hidden from, from the world, but it's, there's, a little, there's a little tip of what we might find in my city. And both these lives are very, sometimes even difficult to, to manage together. Um, surfing starts at five in the morning and this kind of music goes up until three or four in the morning. So I've got to choose who to be when, when I'm about to like finish the, the day of work and say, oh, am I going to listen to music? Then probably I'm not going to surf tomorrow or, or I'm going to be dead tomorrow. And, but these ideas that are a bit, I don't know, maybe different from each other, um, I connect with both of them in a very personal and, and sensible level, I guess. This is my, my, from a personal point of view, this is my most important project ever. It basically combines the three things that I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to surf and, and be a surfer and explore, mainly. I've always wanted to be or to experience music in um, professional, but also I, I say professional because your job is basically where you spend most of your time. And if your job is connected to music, that's what I mean, professionally live music and to do proper sociology and try to find answers and get to places that people don't usually go to. This has all those three components, like you're living a, a surfing journey, you're living a musical journey, and you're searching for answers and to make sense of things and to meet people. This is what it's all about for me. Music and surfing, they can have a very interesting connection. We're surfing proper waves. Sound is also waves. And, and this in itself is already a connection, but flamenco goes a bit deeper in the sense that in other cultures, you're looking at dancing as sort of a, something that's connected to the music, but it's not the music. It's something that takes advantage kind of the music to exist. You can, in a weird way, create music while people are dancing and be inspired by that, but it's usually the other way around. Dancing happens because music is happening. But in flamenco, music and dancing, they mix. So the dancer is also making music. And this is something that's very explored in the episode. In that sense, surfing is, in my view, a way of dancing as well. You're choreographing um, your movements to the, to, the, to the rhythm of something, which is the rhythm of the wave you're surfing at that moment. In dancing, you're choreographing um, your, your movements to the rhythm of the sound waves, which is, there's a connection in there. So we were recording throughout like a week and, and during these weeks, you don't, you don't really see that in the episodes, but it's a bit, it can be stressful. It can be a bit overwhelming. Stuff goes wrong sometimes, you, you, like plans don't go as you thought they would. Um, and in this case, you're connecting swell in a place that is very difficult to work properly. So Andalusia is not the most consistent place. It's like in the entrance to the Mediterranean. It doesn't receive swells from a lot of directions. It's sensible to the wind. With the schedules of, for instance, musicians that are the most professional musicians I've worked with so far. So they're always um, all over the place. They were coming the dancer was coming from Madagascar, I think, from a tour that she did in that region, like the, the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean and stuff. And both the singer and the guitarist were coming from the States, if I'm not mistaken. And they were just passing through. We got to speak to them through our, our Cicerone, like Kuru, which was, you will know him on the episode, I guess. And, and the light and the production, like the usual, production problems that you have while you're recording anything. 
And in the end of the episode, we managed to join this dancer who is from Cadiz and uh, David, we, which is, who is the singer from Jerez. They're two different languages, two different schools of flamenco. And they got together in an amazing uh, sunlight light. Um, and we're like, this, this was going to end the episode and to end the recording um, of the episode. And we're like, oh, what the fuck? This is actually happening. Like, we're done and this is beautiful. We did it. Probably El Palmar. Um, again, we could have gotten better ways for sure. Like, El Palmar works as uh, any like proper heavy beach break sometimes works. It's very barely. Um, when it's offshore and big, like, there will be barrels for sure. And it happens because it's like a west facing beach break. So, it works as Carcavelos or Supertubes or, or any other, like, or Belich, any other powerful beach break in Portugal because it's facing the same um, swells. But again, I would love to have tried it with better waves because uh, it felt a bit like Carcavelos. We got, like, tiny barrels and stuff, but it, I know it has more potential than that. The three episodes that we're recording now, uh, Alentejo, Spain, and... Um, Mor Morocco, they are very different from each other, each one of them, they're, they're completely, even though there's a, and I thought this would happen, there's a, a line that conducts all of these music and connects, connects it because it comes sort of from the same place, it also, it also shows that these places are completely different, that these cultural heritages are completely different, different as well. And um, in Spain what I thought was in comparison, for instance, with Alentejo, it wasn't as easy to connect with the culture of the music because it's hidden, even more hidden than Cantalentejano. It's like behind very thick uh, doors. But at the same time, because these people are so professional and they do this so well and all the time, everything just looks super beautiful. And, and so I think the contrast, and, and it's also like when you when you go to a tavern to listen to Cantal and Jen, people are dressed as if they had just come f from work. When you go to Andalusia to listen to these guys perform, they're impeccably dressed and, and impeccably like, I don't know, uh, shaved, presentable in a way that they could go on any stage and they're just there with you to talk a little bit, <laughs> you know? So everything just looks so, uh, so beautiful and, and so intense in that sense. Probably Brazil in this stage. I don't think I will need the unlimited budget, budget for that. I hope next year we'll be doing that. But uh, um, probably Brazil. Just because I'm, I'm the product of Brazilian parents. I've always listened to Brazilian music. Uh, it's one of the places that I think it's more rich culturally. There's different influences from everywhere in the world. I know that there's authenticity in that music. It's... It's a very alive country in terms of music, and it also has good waves, so I think it's a personal place. I think it, it, it proved to be the first time I ever felt in some way like a sociologist. Like, um, it, it, it uh, showed something that probably was always like, like brewing inside me or something. It was always like there was something bubbling that wanted to come out, and this was probably it. Like, how, how can I... Uh, combine all of these like so intense, such intense passions like surfing, music. It has always been with me throughout my life, and curiosity mainly, which is the aim to the the um, the reason why one goes to document stuff. And it was the first time in which I felt, for instance, in in Morocco, I was in in a ritual, a Gnawa ritual. It's like a healing ritual, and uh, the walls are covered with old uh, rugs and mattresses, people are getting into weird trances, there's smoke in the air, the, the music starts to like hit you because it's three or four in the morning and you're, and you're tired, and, but you're still there. They were gonna sacrifice a camel the next day in order for the go gods of Gnawa to, I don't know, it's a, sac a ritual sacrifice. Uh, and you're like, yeah, I'm living this stuff. This is, this is what I'm doing now. It's something that I've always wanted to do, but I had never done it. So I guess it did change me, but in a way that it's like a, it's sculpting a rock that was always there. You know, the sculpture was there, but uh, you needed to start hitting it, <laughs> I guess.